Hello everyone, welcome to Nesso Academy. In the previous lecture, we have understood functions in C++. We got to know what a function is and we learned how to call a function, declare a function and define a function. Now we are in this lecture and the name of this lecture is Default Arguments of Functions. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. The first topic of this lecture is default arguments. First, we will properly understand what are default arguments and how do we use them. Then, we will move to the next topic to understand some rules associated with default arguments that we need to remember. So, these are the topics of this lecture. Let's start with the first one, default arguments. So, what are default arguments? Default arguments are default values for the parameters of a function provided at the time of its declaration or definition. So, default arguments are the values that we pass to the parameters of the function at the time of declaration or definition of the function. And these arguments are automatically used by the compiler if the caller does not supply the arguments, if at all it is the case that we call the function without passing arguments to the parameters which has the default arguments, then the compiler will automatically assign default arguments for those parameters. Now, let's understand how we can pass default arguments to a function. Let's take one simple example. We can pass default arguments to a function at the time of definition. Here is one example. Here I have defined the add function with these two parameters a and b. Parameter b has the default argument of 1. Here the default argument is provided with the help of the assignment operator. This is how you can pass the default argument to a specific parameter. So, when we call this function and if we choose to not provide the argument to this parameter, then we can do this. In that case, the compiler will automatically assign this default argument to this parameter. So, this is the definition of the add function. Here we can observe the body of this function has return a plus b. So, this function will return the result of a plus b. As mentioned already, we can provide default argument to a specific parameter at the time of the definition of the function or we can provide default argument at the time of declaration, like this. Here is the declaration of the add function. You can observe the semicolon at the end. Here you can observe the default argument to this parameter b has been passed at the time of declaration. Here is the definition of this function and in the definition you can observe the default argument is not provided to b. This is because of the rule that we need to follow in case of default arguments. Here is the rule. Give default arguments either in the declaration or definition, not both. This is the reason that when I have provided the default argument at the time of declaration, then I have not provided the default argument at the time of definition. We need to follow this rule. We can either give the default argument to a parameter at the time of definition or at the time of declaration, but not both. Here is one more important point to understand. We cannot use list initialization to provide the default argument. We need to use the copy initialization. Here I have used the assignment operator to provide the default argument. We cannot use list initialization here. Now let's see how to call these type of functions. Here is the call to this function. I have called this function add with two arguments, 2 and 3. These arguments will be received by these parameters. Please note that parameter b will receive value 3, not 1, because parameter b will receive the default argument 
when we do not provide the argument to parameter b from the caller. This is what I have mentioned here. The compiler will automatically assign the default argument to the parameter if the caller does not supply the argument. But here, the caller has supplied the argument to parameter b, therefore b will receive value 3. So, value of a is 2 and value of b is 3. We will get the result 5 from this function. I hope this is clear to you. Now, if we want, we can call this function like this. I have called this function with just one argument. This argument will be received by parameter a. And this means we have not passed any argument to parameter b. So, clearly, compiler will automatically assign this default argument to parameter b. So, we can say a is 2 and b is 1 in this specific case. We will get the value 3 from this function. So, I have mentioned in the comment 3 to indicate that when we call this function, we will get the output as 3. So, with this we have understood how to use default arguments in a function and how we can call these type of functions with default arguments. Now, let's understand what's the use case of default arguments. Default arguments are mainly used when a new parameter needs to be added to the existing function. Let's say we already have some function in our program and we have called that function many times in the code. Now, let's say we want to add a new parameter to our function. If we provide the new parameter to the function without passing in the default argument, then we need to update all the callers of the function because we cannot simply call the function without passing the value to the parameter which we have just added without the default argument. This will cause the error. Now, to avoid this situation, we can pass the parameter with the default argument. In this way, we do not have to update the existing function calls. We can call this function by passing argument to the new parameter added or we can choose to not pass argument to the parameter because we have provided the parameter with default argument. I hope this idea is clear to you. So, default arguments are mainly used in those situations when we already have some function and we need to pass new parameter to that function. We can pass that parameter with the default argument. So, with this, we have understood default arguments properly. This means we are done with the first topic. Now, let's move to the second topic to understand some rules associated with default arguments that we need to remember. Here is the rule number one. Default arguments must be assigned from right to left. We must always provide default arguments to the parameters from right to left, not left to right. And there is the strong reason behind this, which we now understand with the help of an example program. Here is the example program. I have defined this add function here, and here is the definition of the main function. Inside this main function, I have written this stdc out line, and here I am calling the add function with just one argument, 3. Now, here you can observe these parameters. We have A and B as parameters and parameter A has the default value. Parameter B does not have a default value. This is not allowed in C++ because we cannot assign default arguments to parameters from left to right. We cannot provide the default argument to parameter A and leave parameter B without default argument. We will get error from the compiler. Now, why are we getting the error? What's the reason behind this? Let's understand this through this example. 
Here, I am calling the add function with value 3. In reality, I want to pass this value to parameter b, but I cannot do this. This value will be provided to parameter a and not parameter b. This means I cannot call this function without passing values to these two parameters. I have to do this. If at all, I want to call this function by passing the argument to just parameter b, then I cannot do this. Understand that the compiler will take this value and provide this to parameter a. Now, what about parameter b? To this parameter, we have not passed any value. And this parameter does not have a default argument. So, clearly, if we call this function like this, then we will get error from the compiler. So, we can say this default argument is of no use. We have to call this function by passing two values to these parameters. So, we cannot leverage this specific default argument. This is the reason why we must pass default arguments from right to left. So, this definition is perfectly fine. Here in this definition of the add function, you can observe in this definition that parameter b has the default argument, but parameter a has been left without any default argument. This is allowed in C++. Now, if we call this add function by passing just one argument, this argument will be received by parameter a and parameter b will receive this value 10. So, we will get the output as 13 for this program. We will not get the error. This is because we have provided the default arguments from right to left, not left to right. I hope this idea is clear to you. So, with this, we have understood the rule number one. We must pass the default arguments from right to left, not left to right. Now, here comes the rule number two. Argument cannot be skipped in between. If we want, we cannot skip an argument in between. Now, to understand this concept, let's take one example program. Here in this example program, I have defined this new version of the add function with these three parameters, and these three parameters have default arguments. Now, here is the definition of this function. Here I have written return a plus b plus c. So, I want to add the values of these parameters and I want to return the result to the caller. Here is the main function and here is the stdc out statement with this call to the add function. Here you can observe that I am skipping an argument in between. This means I am skipping the argument which I need to provide to this parameter b. This is not allowed in C++. This syntax is not correct. We will get error from the compiler. We cannot even do this. We cannot pass arguments to parameter b and c without passing argument to parameter a. Here also we will get error from the compiler. When we need to pass arguments at the time of calling the function, we must pass the arguments from left to right. That's the rule we need to follow. We cannot skip the arguments in between. And we can also not skip the first argument and provide arguments for the remaining parameters. We can call this function in these ways. We can call this function without passing any arguments. This is allowed because we have default arguments for all these parameters. We can call this function by passing just one argument like this. This argument will be received by variable a or parameter a and the remaining parameters will receive these default arguments that is 2 and 3. What about this function call? These two arguments will be received by parameters A and B and parameter C will receive the default argument 3 
And when we call this function with three arguments, then these three arguments will be received by these three parameters. So these are the ways in which we can call this function. And for this specific program, we will get the output 6, 15, 33 and 16. You can verify this on your own. Why are we getting this output? I hope this is completely clear to you. So, the conclusion is simple. We need to remember this thing that when we pass default arguments to the parameters, then we must pass them from right to left. But when we pass arguments at the time of calling the function, then we must pass the arguments from left to right. I hope this idea is completely clear to you. You need to remember this rule. So with this, we have understood all the rules that we need to remember about default arguments. And this means we are done with the second topic also. This means we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.